Welcome to the Valley Community Church YouTube channel. My name is Caleb. We're glad that you are tuning in today. We hope that you enjoy this message as we continue our series, Why Christianity? Uh, there, there are a lot of people uh, that are just struggling with the idea of Christianity. Like, w- what do I do with that? And, and is this something that I really want to be a part of or associated with? And, and, and more and more, there are people that are abandoning their faith, that are walking away or deciding whether, you know, I really want to give God a shot or not. Um, and, and, and because of that, uh, we wanted to address some things where this is concerned. And, and, and I hope that today you'll lean in and really receive what God has for us today. Uh, when we talk about our beliefs, when we talk about uh, what it is that, that uh, we, we trust or believe in, I, I think one of the reasons that, that some people struggle with the things of Christianity isn't because of the way Jesus lived. It's not because of the way that Jesus loved, but it's because of the way that Jesus claimed or the things that Jesus claimed. Let me, let me explain a little bit here. Um, when people talk about God or spirituality, uh, whether it's in an interview, on TV, or whatever, when people say God, mention God, talk about spirituality, there's really... Uh, no conflict. Nobody has too much to say about that. If, if an athlete thanks God after a big game, if, if uh, an actor, an actress uh, thanks God or, you know, whatever, after, uh, you know, receiving an award, nobody really thinks too much about that. But as soon as somebody says the name Jesus... Things change a little bit. It, it's amazing how quickly that people can get on edge when, you, when, they, when, when the name of Jesus is invoked. Now, here's the deal. Most people across the world really like Jesus. It's, it's hard not to, right? I mean, he loved people. He uh, embraced those that were hurting and those that were struggling. He spent time with sinners. He humbled uh, oppressive leaders, right? He, he, um, he did things that were just amazing and, and blew people's mind. He defended the poor and those that were struggling. I mean... He restocked the wine barrels at a wedding. How awesome is that, right? I mean, he did some pretty incredible things. He multiplied a little boy's lunch, and they had a picnic on the side of a mountain. Very cool. People like how Jesus lived, and they like how Jesus loved, but they they get really concerned when you start talking about the claims of Jesus. Now, I want to look objectively here for just a moment uh, about Jesus. Jesus was incredibly humble, right? I mean, he was an incredibly humble person. He uh, was willing to put others ahead of himself, do for others and help others. I mean, he washed his disciples' feet, for goodness sake. That was something that was reserved for the very lowest in society uh, during that time. And he was willing to do that. He was a very humble individual. But here's the thing. He was not modest at all. He wasn't modest. Okay? What do you mean, Jason? Why why do you say that? Well, let let me explain. You might remember in Scripture when Lazarus died, right? And he goes to minister there, and they come and they tell him, they say, listen, Jesus, Lazarus has died. How come you weren't here? If you would have just been here. And he didn't say, you know what, I'm so sorry. Uh, You know, that happens at times in life. People die, and and that's just sad, and I'm sorry for you. He didn't say that. What did he say? He said, I am the resurrection and the life, right? He he, he said that. He he claimed it. And, And when he would say this, you know, people would probably be like, whoa, a little bit. He, he, 
healed somebody on the Sabbath. And when the Pharisees and Sadducees came at him and said, listen, you can't do that on the Sabbath. There's, you're not supposed to do that. He said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. I'm over the Sabbath. I'm bigger than the Sabbath. And that would cause problems. That would cause controversy. He was instructing his followers and he was teaching them. He said, anyone who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Ouch. That would probably hurt just a little bit. They're like, Jesus, man, that's hard to accept. One of the reasons people tend to struggle with the things of Christianity, it isn't because of the way Jesus lived or the fact that he loved people because we see that and we know that. It's because of what Jesus claimed. He claimed that he and the Father were one, that he and God were on, on the same level. He, he said he was the only way to get to the Father. If you want to get to God, you got to go through me. He's the only way. And, and, and for some people, that's just hard to grasp. It's hard to grab a hold of. Here's what he said in John 14, talking to the disciples. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father except through me. And this is difficult for some. Because there, this just can't be. Jesus can't be the only way to God. It, it, it's, it's too exclusive, Jason. You, you, you can't say that's just too exclusive. For this day and time, that just... That just Puts people off. People don't like it. It's too exclusive. It doesn't seem fair. It's just not right. God, surely God wouldn't do that. And so people struggle with this. And, and, and some even question their own Christian faith that as they, you know, they get up, they get out of the home or whatever, they go off to college or, or they talk to, to people or they hear things or they see things on TV, they begin to struggle with this. This just doesn't seem right. I mean, society says this, culture says this, but this is what Jesus, I, how, do I, how do I rationalize this and how in the world could this be right? Why would God do that? And then they say things like, you know, it, it really doesn't matter what you believe. You, you just got to believe something. It doesn't matter what it is because really all paths lead to God. All religions are basically the same. And as long as you believe something, then, then, then you'll get there. And listen, that sounds good. I mean, honestly, right? I mean, it sounds good. Sounds very inclusive. Sounds very loving. The problem is, it's just not true. It's just not true. Let me, me, me give you a statement here, and I want you to hear me and, and understand what I'm saying. There is, there is some good and some truth and some beauty in all world religions. But they are not the same. They're, they're just not the same. There, there's some good... And there may be even some truth in, in all of it, but, but they're not the same. And, and when you hear that or when people say that, listen, you need to be able to be armed and you need to know, listen, they're, they're not the same. And so I want to take a moment here and, and I, want to, I want to contrast some, not all, but some of, of uh, the, the major world religions here and share some things about each of them. Now listen, I, it, it's, it's a quick, a brief overview. And so I'm going to share information very, very quickly in less than 30 seconds about each one of these. And so there's, it's not exhaustive at all. And, and I don't mean any disrespect by that, but I'm going to hit some religion, including Christianity, and I'm going to hit them very quickly for the sake of time to just give you an understanding of where these different ones are. Let's hit first Buddhism. Buddhism would say this, that there is no God. In fact, they would say there, there is no real type of final existence, just countless rebirth and endless ongoing cycles. Contrast Buddhism with Hinduism. Hinduism says that, that there is a God, but he is a very impersonal God. And you approach this impersonal God through deities and statues and idols. Now, let's, let's look at both of these together, Buddhism and Hinduism. 
And they would say that there is no forgiveness of sins, no supernatural help at all, only karma. Only karma. And you may have heard, if you do good, you will get good. If you do bad, you will get bad and you deserve it if you do. Only karma, okay? That's those two. Now, contrast those two with uh, Islam. A Muslim would worship Allah, who is a personal God. And, that there, and there's no secondary gods. There's a total ban on idols, so keep those to yourself. Uh, that your standing with Allah, their God, is based on your religious devotion, your good works, and your faithfulness, and how well you follow the Quran. Now, contrast that with the New Age movement. N the New Age movement would say that there is no personal God whatsoever, no God, but they, a person in this religion would be seeking a higher consciousness, becoming one with the universe or the cosmos. Now, contrast those with Christianity. Christianity says that there is a very personal God who loves us unconditionally, who sent Jesus to this earth to sacrifice himself so that we could know forgiveness of sins. That is real briefly a summarizing of some of the world religions that are out there. Now, as I said before, there are, is, is some good, some truth and beauty in most world religions. But here's the deal. You can see right there that they are not the same, right? I mean, they're not the same. And, and certainly, all paths don't lead to heaven. Matthew 7, 14 says, but the gateway to life is narrow. There's, there's a narrow road that leads to heaven. I realize that this, uh, it, it, it's, it's because of this and this very reason that some people struggle with Christianity. But I want us to take a moment. I want us to take some time, and, and, and maybe you're one here today that just, maybe you've struggled before. Maybe you've struggled living this out. Maybe you've struggled believing. Maybe you've struggled with, you know, how do, does our culture, you know, fit in this? And it's, it's this way, but, but God says these things, and Scripture says, how do, I, how do I wrestle with this? And maybe you've even considered, maybe I just need to walk away from these things that my parents taught me or whatever. And, and, and so you're just not... Sure, I don't know where you might be in this, but I want us to take a moment and consider not Christianity, per se, not this church, not a, a, a set of rules, a, a set of do's and don'ts, uh, not uh, a, a religion or anything like that. I want, I want you, us to take a moment and consider Jesus. Just consider Jesus and who he was, the person of Jesus. I don't want us to consider any other person, not, certainly not me, because I have shortcomings and will fail and let you down. Not this church, because we don't always get it right. But I want us to take a moment, and I want us to consider Jesus. There's really three aspects, three things about Jesus that I want us to get today, that I want us to look at and, and consider as we're just looking at the, the life of Jesus, not religion in general. Because listen, I, I, I think religion doesn't help anybody, but Jesus does. And when we consider the person of Jesus, and if we honestly and objectively look at who he is and was and what he did, I think that it may make an impact and, and, and do something incredible in our life. First of all, I want us to consider the ministry of Jesus. Consider the ministry of Jesus. Religious leaders of the time, they snubbed the, the people during that time that, that had loose morals or uh, had a past that, that didn't line up with theirs or that they didn't like or didn't, you know, they didn't do things in a right way. Those that drank too much or were poor, didn't have enough money or had some kind of illness or disease or just 
didn't uh, rise to the status that they thought uh, they should. The, the, the religious leaders of the world just kind of cast them aside. But Jesus, Jesus, he, he loved those that were despised, those that were ignored, those that were e- rejected. He, he brought them in and, and ministered to them and loved them and cared for them. Mark 2.16 says this, When the teachers of the law who were Pharisees saw him eating with sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners. He spent time with the people that the world rejected and the world leaders couldn't understand. Why would you do that? Jesus, why would you spend time with those people? Some of his other ministry feats are, you know, incredible miracles that he did. He opened blind people's eyes. He healed deaf ears. He cast out demons. He walked on water. He raised people from the dead. Critics didn't question the validity of his miracles. And fact is, even throughout history, looking back, they they haven't been able to deny or disclaim some of the great things that Jesus did, but they did want him to stop doing them. They didn't want him to continue to do these great things, but they they couldn't discount the fact that he was accomplishing them. Jesus did incredible things during his ministry here on earth. And listen, his ministry continues, and I, I'm a product of the ministry of Jesus. I, I, I can remember at, at, at times I, I grew up uh, in church, grew up, mom and dad, you know, hauling me off to, to church every week. Um, and, and going, and, and I can remember thinking, it's just what we did. I thought everybody, you know, went to church every single Sunday and Sunday night. Remember when we had Sunday night services and Wednesday night, and then sometimes in between there, some we'd have something special and we'd go. I mean, we went all the time. And, and that's, just, that's just what we did. We were, we were used to it. We thought that's what everybody did. But I can remember as I got older, there, there were times when I was like, I don't... I wanted to rebel a little bit, right? Push against what mom and dad wanted and did and, you know, sow some wild oats and enjoy my time. And you only want me to do like this because you don't want me to have any fun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, we, we go through that, right? And I can remember doing that. And, and, and I, I never did really anything all that bad. But I can remember feeling in my heart this, this, this tug of war of, you know, do I want to just do my own thing or whatever? And I can remember different moments in my life. I got saved when I was five years old because that's what you're supposed to do, right? I mean, I just, we were Christian home. I mean, I, got, I, I said the prayer. I got saved. But I, it wasn't until I was a teenager that I can remember an encounter with God that changed my life. And then I can remember a, a youth camp experience where God really called me and, and, and did something in my heart to where I knew that I, was, I had a purpose, a plan, something God wanted me to do. And I can remember another Sunday night service where, man, just a, a, an anointing of God just, just impacted me. And I, I knew that, that I wasn't supposed to pursue what I wanted, but I was, I was supposed to do what God wanted me to do. And it, and it was life changing to the point that it changed where where I was going to go for college and stuff it was it was life altering i remember those those times and and it it was because of that it was because of those moments those encounters with god that it changed my life and made a difference in me and who i was and what god had for me J- jesus didn't just m- just change the old Jason into something. He completely made me a brand new person because that's what Jesus does. And when we experience that, when we know, it, it's amazing the ministry of Jesus and what he does. Consider the ministry of Jesus. And I want you also to consider, secondly, the resurrection of Jesus. We know, we know how much God loves us. He loves us so very much that he was willing to send his one and only son to the earth that he would minister, do some incredible things, but ultimately he would 
die on the cross, right? And he, as he's hanging on that cross, he was taking the sin of the world, my sin, your sin, upon himself. He was taking all of that upon himself. And he, as he's doing that, he would look down off that cross and he would say, God, forgive them. Father, forgive them for what they're doing. And then he would say, I commit myself, my spirit, into your hands. It is finished. And then they would take him, they would put him in a tomb. And three days later, the tomb, the stone would be rolled away. And he would come out of that tomb of the risen Savior. Incredible, incredible the, 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 how, how remarkable that is. And, and it distinguishes Christianity from all the other religions on the earth because of a, a risen Savior. Shortly after this event, Peter would declare, You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses of this. We are witnesses of what took place, of what Jesus has done, and he has raised from the dead. We've seen the scars in his hands. We've, we've seen the resurrected Savior, and we believe in him. Now, some people, some people would say, ah, but we just believe that, that, you know, this story that we've heard, that the disciples actually stole the body of Jesus. And, and, and that he didn't really raise from the dead, but they, they took his body and, and hid it so that people would think that. Let me just, let me just say, you want, right, you want rational people to believe that 11 ordinary, uneducated men, the Bible calls them, they deceived an entire, the, the entire world of that time, the Roman world, they overpowered the Roman military and the guards, and they stole the body away. These 11 small-town, uneducated, average men devised the most elaborate scheme ever known to man and pulled off this incredible heist and kept it a secret the entire time with no personal motive or gain to them but only extreme personal loss and at the same time they cheated the entire world into be a better place <laughs> i mean only they they only had personal i mean 10 of them were martyred were killed because of, of what they did, because of their belief. And one of them, the lucky one, only got dipped in boiling oil and then didn't die. And so they uh, put him on an island all by himself to live out the rest of his days. I mean, would it have been worth it? Uh, no. I mean, who? It, it, to me, it seems much harder to believe that than to believe that Jesus actually raised from the dead, right? But yet, for some people, it's, 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 it's this desire to just, I, I, I've got to believe something else. Listen, I just want us for a moment, honestly, and, and, and for those maybe that you love or may, those that you would talk to, to, to say, listen, just consider, consider the resurrection. And then finally, consider the message of Jesus. Consider his message. Let's, let's just, for a moment, let's think and look objectively at what he taught. John said, don't believe every spirit or everything that is taught, but he said to test the spirits because there will be many false prophets that will come into the world. Here's what he said in 1 John 4, 2. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. That's how we know that it's real. That's how we know that this is something that is from God and can be trusted when you recognize Jesus. Now, let me, let me share with you some thoughts real quick that I've learned from scholars and, and theologians. In Scripture... Jesus, it says about Jesus that he came to the earth or was sent 
to the earth. Now, we know that he was born of a virgin, right? That's the legal entry into the world is to be born. But scripture says that he came or was sent to the earth or to the world. And that means if he was sent, that means he was already somewhere else, right? If he came to the world, he came from somewhere else. And we know that Jesus was already here. He was, he was at the very beginning. He was at creation, Scripture says. And because he was sent, we know that he already was. He was somewhere else. Every other world religion, every other religious founder was a normal human being. But Jesus was God who became flesh for us. Isn't that incredible? He came into this world. He came to us to take upon us our sin. This, again, this distinguishes Christianity from every other world religion. In fact, other religions seek to separate from the world. The Eastern religion would say you overcome the world through stages of consciousness. In the West, they would say through moral behavior or, or, or doing good things. You escape the world and you get to go to heaven if you're good enough and you do good enough. However, Christianity says that God so loved the world that he came, that he was here and he took upon himself. He came to us to do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. The salvation of God isn't just to escape this world, but to redeem the world. He will redeem death, disease, poverty, injustice. Somebody ought to say a good amen about that right now. That's what Jesus did. God, because God so loved the world, he sent Jesus. And he came into the world, not to, to just, just pull us out of the world, but to redeem the world because he so loved the world, his creation. And that's why one day Jesus in Revelation 21, 4 says he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. God just doesn't deliver us from the world he created. He redeems us to, be, to reign with him forever. That is incredible. That is amazing. That is so good. There will be a new earth and a new heaven because of who Jesus is, what he has done. So when we think about, when we look at, when we consider, when we look around and we think about what there is to believe, what should we believe, how should we believe, regardless of what we've done, Regardless of what we've accomplished, regardless of what we've acquired in this life, all the good things and the pleasurable things, regardless of you know, how many great vacations you've went on or you know, the great house or cars or whatever, regardless of your Instagram followers and how many likes you got on that post yesterday, Regardless of all those things, at some point, you, you, you may look around and, and, and think, you know, what, what is it that I really want? What is it that I need? What is it that, 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 that I'm searching for, looking for? What is the meaning of life? And what, what we want is we, we want truth, right? We want to look for and we want to gain and we want to get Truth. We want to find it. We, you know, you've heard, choose your truth, whatever that is. You want, to, you want to find truth. But here's the thing. Whatever truth you choose, whatever it is and whatever religion it is, there's going to be rules. There's going to be a belief system that you follow. And all of those rules and all the systems and all the things that are a part of whatever truth is that you choose, that truth or those rules or whatever, it, it can't hug you when you're hurting. It can't love you when nobody else does. It can't forgive you. It can't encourage you. It can't 
help you. It, they're just rules and regulations. So when we find ourselves in that situation of, you know, we're looking for this truth in all these different places, and this truth just doesn't seem to measure up, and this truth doesn't measure up either, and it doesn't really help me, it doesn't make me feel like what I need to feel, and I just don't, so what do we do? Then we just end up abandoning truth altogether. Let's just throw it out. It, it doesn't work. It doesn't really help me. It's not any good. So let me pursue something else, maybe love. Maybe love, love, yes, love. That's the answer. Love. Love, heart faith. How do you do that? Something like that. Love, I mean, you post enough of those and I get enough followers and friends. Or if I just find that person, that one person that loves me no matter what, you know, even when I wake up with bad breath and, you know, my hair is all over the place. Or, I mean, mine, not yours, mine, not mine. Mine's always in the same place. But, they're the one, they're the one, they complete me. They make all the Hallmark movies make sense. I mean, they're just great. If I just find that person, that person that will always do right, that will always treat me right, they'll always be there, that will never let me down except when they do. Except when they can't do everything that I want them to. And when I realize that they really are imperfect, and they don't always get it right. And just like me, they fail and fall short and they hurt me. And then I realize, you know what? I, now I can't even really trust in love. And so just as truth can't love you, then, then those people that I've looked to and loved, they're not always true because they're flawed. And so what do we do? We abandon truth and we become cynical about love. And so then all we have left is to make hateful posts on social media about everybody else. <laughs> right? And, and, and that's, that's so sad. But here's the, here's the thing. As we consider Jesus, as we look at Jesus, and I, and I said, Jesus said, I am the way, I'm the truth, and I am the life. I am the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. That's, that's who I am. And so if we think of truth as not a set of ideals or morals or rules, but we think of truth as a person, and we realize that truth really is a person, truth is Jesus. When we realize that truth is a person, and because truth is a person, Jesus is a truth that can love you no matter what you're going through, no matter where you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how many mistakes you've made, he loves you. And because he loves you and he's without sin, he can love you and it will never fail. It will never fail go away. It will always be there for you. He can lift you up. He can encourage you. He can help you like no one else is because he is the perfect truth. And that's why we say Jesus is the name above all names. And every knee has to bow at the name of Jesus because he is the truth. He is the way. And when we understand this, when we grasp this, when we realize who Jesus is, that he is the truth and he is a person and he's a person who can love us and help us and encourage us and lift us up in our weakest of moments. He's a truth worth putting everything on the line for. He's a truth worth living for. And that's why today I'm asking you, I'm begging, I'm imploring you today to consider Jesus, not all the other things, just the person of Jesus, who he is, and how he loves. Maybe it's for the first time. Maybe it's that you've decided, you know, I'm really going to get serious about this relationship with the Lord. Or maybe it's, you know what, I'm finally going to be all in. I'm finally going to be all in. And really live my life to serve Jesus with everything that I have. Then we can really embrace what 
Romans 3.22 says. It says, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ, putting our faith in him, fully putting our faith, our trust in him. And this is true for everyone, for everyone, say everyone, for everyone who believes no matter who they are, no matter what they've done, no matter what things they come from, no matter what challenges they might have to overcome, it's true for everyone when we put our faith in Jesus. We become new creations in Him. Here's the deal. It's, it's Jesus and nothing else. It's Jesus plus nothing. It's not Jesus plus my good works. It's not Jesus plus if I, you know, I'm able to accomplish these certain things. It's not Jesus plus anything. It's Jesus plus nothing. And that's why I say religion, you know, and I've said this before, religion, it's all about me. Religion is all, it, it just focuses on me and what can I do and what should I do and how should I do it and can I do it good enough and I have to do da 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 so that I can be good enough. And it, and it says, man, if I just, if I work hard enough and if I do these things good enough, then God will love me. But Christianity, Christ-centered relationship says, no, because he first loved me, then I can embrace this love from the Father, and then I'm able to do things because I love him. Amen? Amen. With, with religion, it's all about D-O. It's all about what you do. Can you do enough? Can you accomplish enough? But with a, a Christ-centered relationship, with, with him, it's all about D-O-N-E. It's already been done. Jesus already did it for us. And there's no more that we have to do. He already did it. Amen? And when we realize this, when we grasp this, when we understand this, it's not hard to say, why wouldn't I want that in my life? Why wouldn't I want to live for that? Why wouldn't I want to embrace that with everything that I have with, with all that I know and with all of my being. And here's the thing, because the evidence that I see, that I recognize is so clear, I have to put my faith in Jesus. I choose to put my faith in the one who has done it all for me, who has redeemed me, who has set me on a path for all good things. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And I realize, I realize I get it. Some would say, well, Christianity, it's just too exclusive. It's too exclusive. I, can, I can't do it. It's just, it's just too exclusive for me. Here's the deal. It's the most inclusive of them all. Yeah. Because... It's the only one that I see that read that no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, the hurting, the lowly, the poor, the sick, they can all come to Jesus and there find acceptance and forgiveness and goodness and health and relationship with him. It's the most inclusive. And I'll continue to say that and preach that all my days. And I believe that when we truly consider Jesus, we can truly give him a shot and, and allow him to be a part of our life, we won't want anything else because it is truly the one thing because it, he's a person who can make a difference in our lives. Amen. We hope that you enjoyed the message today. If it impacted you in any way, feel free to share it with a friend or a family member. If you're new to Valley Community Church, you want to know more about us, head over to grainvalley.church. You can check us out on our website, or you can head over to our other social media platforms on Instagram and Facebook and check us out on there and see what's happening here at VCC. Hey, if there's anything that we can be praying for you about, leave us a comment below. You can send us a message and we'll take some time and we'll pray for all those needs that get turned in. We love you so much and we can't wait to see you guys back next week.